Jai Hind. I am Cadet Kenneth Stephen Disa, representing Karnataka and Goa Directorate, 6 Karnataka Air Squadron NCC Mangalore, NCC Air Wing Flight A. In this session, we shall learn about the principles of flight. So let's begin the session. When once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward. For there you have been, and there you will always long to return. Leonardo da Vinci He was a great pioneer of flying. And so, this should inspire you that anyone can learn to fly. It is essential to have a basic knowledge of elementary mechanics to understand the various principles of flight because both the aircraft and the atmosphere in which it flies are made up of matter. All matter are subjected to the laws of mechanics. We shall first learn some important definitions before getting into the fun stuff. Mass The quantity of matter in a body the mass of a body is a measure of how difficult it is to start or stop a body. A body in this context means any substance that is a gas, a liquid or a solid. The unit of mass is kilogram, in short kg. Density It is the mass per unit volume. Motion Motion is said to be there when a body changes its position in relation to its surroundings. Speed Speed is the rate of change of position of a body. Velocity Velocity is speed in a particular direction. Velocity is a vector quantity having both magnitude and direction. Acceleration Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. The change may be in magnitude or direction or in both. Thus, a body moving along a circular path at constant speed is also accelerating as it is changing its direction. Acceleration is equal to force by mass. Newton's Laws of Motion Newton's first law of motion A body will continue to be in the state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an external force. This property of all bodies is called inertia and a body in such a state is said to be in equilibrium. Newton's second law of motion The rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction of the application of the said force. Newton's third law of motion To every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is by far the most easy of all the three laws. Momentum The quantity of motion possessed by a body The tendency of a body to continue in motion after being placed in motion is called momentum. The unit of momentum is kg meter per second. Momentum is equal to mass into velocity. Force Force is either a push or a pull. That which causes or tends to cause a change in motion of a body. The unit of force is Newton. Pressure Pressure is force per unit area. Weight The earth exerts a certain force towards its center on all objects on its surface. This force is called the weight of the body and is equal to the mass of the body multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. The unit of weight is Newton. It is the force due to gravity. Weight is equal to the mass of the body represented by small letter m multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity represented by the small letter g. Work 
A force is said to do work on a body when it moves the body in the direction in which the force is acting. The amount of work done on a body is the product of the force applied to the body and the distance moved by that force in the direction in which it is acting. If a force is exerted and no movement takes place, no work has been done. Work is equal to force into distance through which the force is applied. The unit of work is joule. Power Power is simply the rate of doing work. Or in other words, it is the time taken to do work. The unit of power is watt. Power is equal to force into distance divided by time. Energy Mass has energy if it has the ability to do work. The amount of energy a body possesses is measured by the amount of work it can do. The unit of energy will therefore be the same as those of work. The unit of energy is joule. The law of conservation of energy, the sum total of all energy in the universe, remains constant. Moment of a force Moment of a force is the turning effect of the force about a point and is measured as the product of the force and the perpendicular distance between the point and the line of action of the force. Couple A couple consists of two equal and opposite and parallel forces not acting through the same point. The moment of a couple is equal to the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the two lines of action of the force. Equilibrium A body is said to be in equilibrium when the algebraic sum of all the forces acting on the body is zero and the clockwise moment is equal to the anti-clockwise moment about any point. Center of gravity The point through which the weight of an aircraft acts. An aircraft in flight is said to rotate around its center of gravity. The center of gravity of an aircraft must remain within certain forward and aft limits for reasons of both stability and control. Kinetic energy The energy possessed by mass because of its motion. A mass that is moving can do work in coming to rest. The unit of kinetic energy is joule. Kinetic energy is equal to half into mass into the velocity squared. Potential energy The energy possessed by a body by virtue of its position relative to others, stresses within itself, electric charge and other factors. We have come to an end to all these definitions. Now let us learn a few glossary of terms about the aircraft. In order to understand the principles of flight, the following main glossary of terms are required. Aerofoil An aerofoil is a body designed to produce more lift than drag. A typical aerofoil section is cambered on its top surface and is more or less straight at its bottom. Chord line. It is an imaginary line joining the centers of curvature of the leading and the trailing edges of an aerofoil section. The leading edge of an aerofoil is the one facing the nose of an aircraft and the trailing edge of an aerofoil is the one facing the tail of an aircraft. Chord length. It is the length of the chord line intercepted between the leading and the trailing edges. Angle of attack It is the angle between the chord line and the relative airflow, undisturbed by the presence of an aerofoil. Angle of incidence The angle between the chord line 
and the longitudinal axis of the aircraft is called the angle of incidence. Total reaction It is one single force representing all the pressures force per unit area over the surface of the aerofoil. It acts through the center of pressure which is situated on the cord line of the aircraft. Lift The vertical component of the total reaction resolved at right angles to the relative airflow. Drag The horizontal component of the total reaction acting at right angles and in the same direction as the relative airflow. Thrust Thrust is the force that propels an object forward. Weight Weight is the force that causes objects to fall downwards. These are the four forces that comprise the total reaction of an aircraft. And with that, we have ended the glossary of terms. Now, we shall study a very important but very interesting topic called Bernoulli's Principle. Bernoulli's Principle is an idea of fluid dynamics. Bernoulli's Principle states that for an inviscid flow, an increase in the speed of the fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure or a decrease in the fluid's potential energy. The equation for Bernoulli's Principle is given in the pictures below. The pressure energy plus the kinetic energy per unit volume plus the potential energy per unit volume remains constant for an inviscid flow. Bernoulli's principle has various applications. Airplanes get a part of their lift by taking advantage of Bernoulli's principle. Race cars employ Bernoulli's principle to keep their rear wheels on the ground while traveling at high speeds. Bernoulli's principle can be derived from the principle of conservation of energy. This states that in a steady flow, the sum of all forms of energy in a fluid along a streamline is the same at all points of that streamline. This requires that the sum of kinetic energy potential energy and internal energy remains constant. The total energy in a given closed system does not change, but the form of energy may be altered. Venturi effect At low flight speeds, air experiences relatively small changes in pressure and negligible changes in density. This airflow is termed incompressible since the air may undergo changes in pressure without apparent changes in density. Such airflow is similar to the flow of water, hydraulic fluid or any other incompressible fluid. This suggests that between any two points in the tube, the velocity varies inversely with the area. Venturi effect is the name used to describe this phenomenon. Fluid flow speeds up through the restricted area of a venturi in direct proportion to the reduction in area. The velocity of the fluid increases as it flows through the narrower tube while the pressure decreases due to conservation of energy. The effect is an example of Bernoulli's principle. As you can see in this tube, when the fluid starts, it starts at 100 knots. But as it goes to the narrower end, its speed or velocity increases to 200 knots. But then, as the area of the tube increases, its velocity decreases. This is the Venturi effect. Fluid flow pressure is made up of two components, static pressure and dynamic pressure. The static pressure is that measured by an aneroid barometer placed in the flow but not moving with the flow. The dynamic pressure of the flow is that component of the total pressure due to the motion of the air. It is difficult to measure directly but a pitot-static tube 
measures it indirectly. The sum of these two pressures is the total pressure and is measured by allowing the flow to impact against an open-ended tube which is venter to an aneroid barometer. This is the incompressible or slow speed form of the Bernoulli's equation. Static pressure decreases as the velocity increases. This is what happens to air passing over the curved top of an aircraft's aerofoil. A pressure differential force is generated by the local variation of static and dynamic pressures on the curved surface. Following are pictures of the pitot static tube which are fitted on various aircrafts and what in all instruments it indicates. And now we are moving on to the last topic. But even though it is the last, it is a very exciting topic. The topic's name is aerofoil and its designs. First, let us learn more about the aerofoil. An aerofoil is the shape of a wing or blade of a propeller, rotor or turbine or sail as seen in cross section. A cross section is when you cut a wing and you look at it from a right angle. An aerofoil shaped body moved through a fluid produces an aerodynamic force. The component of this force perpendicular to the direction of motion is called lift. The component parallel to the direction of motion is called drag. Subsonic flight aerofoils have a characteristic shape with the round leading edge followed by a sharp trailing edge, often with asymmetric camber. Camber is the uh, curviness of a wing. Foils of similar function designed with water as the working fluid are called hydrofoils. An airfoil with a positive camber produces lift at zero angle of attack. With increased angle of attack, lift increases in a roughly linear relation called the slope of the lift curve. At about 18 degrees, this airfoil starts to stall and lift falls off quickly beyond that. The drop in lift can be explained by the action of the upper surface boundary layer which separates and greatly thickens over the upper surface at and past the stall angle. The thickened boundary layer's displacement thickness changes the airfoil's effective shape. In particular, it reduces its effective camber, which modifies the overall flow field so as to reduce the circulation and the lift. The thicker boundary layer also causes a large increase in pressure drag so that the overall drag increases sharply near and past the stall point. And now we come to the most exciting topic of them all, aerofoil design. Any object with an angle of attack in a moving fluid such as a flat plate will generate an aerodynamic force called lift perpendicular to the flow. Airfoils are more efficient lifting shapes, able to generate more lift up to a point and to generate lift with less drag. Various airfoils serve different flight regimes. Asymmetric airfoils can generate lift at zero angle of attack, while a symmetric airfoil may better suit frequent inverted flight as in an aerobatic airplane. In the region of the ailerons and near a wingtip, a symmetric airfoil can be used to increase the range of angle of attacks to avoid spin stall. Thus, a large range of angles can be used without boundary layer separation. Subsonic airfoils have a round leading edge which is naturally insensitive to the angle of attack. The cross-section is not strictly circular, however, 
the radius of curvature is increased before the wing achieves maximum thickness to minimize the chance of boundary layer separation. This elongates the wing and moves the point of maximum thickness back from the leading edge. Supersonic airfoils Supersonic means faster than the speed of sound. Supersonic airfoils are much more angular in shape and can have a very sharp leading edge, which is very sensitive to angle of attack. A supercritical airfoil has its maximum thickness close to the leading edge to have a lot of length to slowly shock the supersonic flow back to subsonic speeds. Generally such transonic airfoils and also the supersonic airfoils have a low camber to reduce drag divergence. Modern aircraft wings may have different airfoil sections along the wingspan, each one optimized for the conditions in each section of the wing. And sadly, this is the end of this session. Let us end with a quick recap of what we have learned in this session. We learned about the various definitions in elementary mechanics. We learned the glossary of terms related to an aircraft. We also learned the exciting topic that is Bernoulli's principle and the Venturi effect. We also learned about the different airfoil designs and their functions. Thank you. Jai Hind.